Hello class, today we're going to learn about simple interest. And the first concept that you need to know is time value of money. And what the time value of money states is that money today is worth more than the money in the future. The reason is if you have a dollar today, you can always deposit the money into the bank and earn interest on it. So in a year time, you will have more than one dollar because you earn interest on it. So therefore, the money that you have today is worth more than the money you have in the future. So if you take time plus money, then that will give you interest. And in this chapter, we have two formulas, I equals to PRT and S equals to P times one plus RT. These are the two formulas. So capital I is your interest amount. So that is a dollar amount. So that is the amount of interest earned. And then P is your principal. That's your present value. That's how much you have today. That's your principal value. And then R is your interest rate, is your annual interest rate. So R is always as an annual term. And then T is the time period in years. Okay, so note that R and T are both in years. R equals annual interest rate. T equals time period in years. That's the first formula. Second formula is S equals to P times 1 plus RT. S is your maturity value, which is your future value. So that's how much money you have at the end. And then P again, P is your principal amount. That's your present value. That's how much money you have today. So your future value equals to P times 1 plus RT. That's what the formula is saying. S equals to P times 1 plus RT. And if we look at that formula, we know that there's a positive relationship between the interest rate R and S. So as your R goes up, as your interest rate increases, then your future value will increase. That makes sense because if the interest rate is higher, that means you earn more interest on it. So your future value will be higher. And on the other hand, we have an inverse relationship between interest rate and present value. So the higher the interest rate, the lower your present value. That's the second formula. Example one, Perry Grain Corporation wants to invest 48,000 in a short-term deposit. The bank offers 1.7% interest rate for a one-year term and a 1.6% for six-month terms. Part A, how much would Perry Grain receive if the 48,000 is invested for one year? And then part B, how much would Perry Grain receive at the end of one year if the 48,000 is invested for six month period and then the principal and the interest earned is reinvested for another six months. So in part A and part B, the formula that we're going to use is S equals to P times one plus RT. And then in the question, the first number that we see is 48,000. That is our present value. That's how much we have today. That's the principal amount that we have today. That is the P for both case A and B. So in part A, we're investing for one year, and the one-year interest rate is 1.7%. So that's your R, and then our T is one year because we're investing for one year. So once we have P, once we have R and T, then we can substitute that into the formula and then solve for S. So we have S equals to 48,000 times bracket 1 plus 0 0.017 times 1, close the bracket. And we're going to get S equals to 48,816. And that's part A. Part B is similar. We're using the same formula. The only difference is that now we have two six-month period. So that means we have to calculate the S, the future value, two times. So in the first six months, we have 48,000 times bracket 1 plus 0 0.016 times 1 half. The reason T is 1 half is because T is in years and we have six months. So six months equals to half a year. And if we calculate that, we're going to get 48,384 for S1. So that's the maturity value at the end of six months. And that maturity value becomes the present value for the next six months. So what we have at the end of the first six months becomes the present value of the next six months. So therefore, our P for the next six months is 48,384. And we times it by bracket 1 plus RT. R is the same, 0 0.016 times T. T is still one half because we're investing for the second six months. And if we calculate that, S2 will equal $48,771. And that's part B. Part C, what would the one year rate have to be to yield the same amount of interest as the investment described in part B? So in part C, we're looking for the one year rate. So what we're solving for is R. R is a question mark. And we're using the same formula, S equals to P times one plus RT. We're solving for R. R is the question mark. And we know that T is one year because we're looking for one year rate. So T equals to one year. 
and we have the same present value, the 48,000, that's the P. And we're looking at the same amount interest earned in part B. So therefore, our future value is the 48,771. That is our S. And once we have S, once we have P and T, then we can solve for R. So we have 48,771.07 equals to 48,000 times bracket 1 plus R times 1. And we divide both sides by 48,000 and we solve for R. You're going to get R equals to 0 0.016. And that's part C.